Kevin Nisbet turns Adam McGreen for the first time in almost four years as Hibs win the Edinburgh Derby, but their top six spot is not guaranteed. Elsewhere, Arsenal's title lead slips. Perez and Laporta added flares to the flames of El Clasico. Hakimi draws comparisons to Andrew Tate. France's title race is over, but Hungary's is just hotting up. This is the False 90s Podcast. That was a long intro, but with me today I have Lewis. How are you doing today? I'm all right, mate. How are you? Um, obviously supposed to have Andy here tonight, but... Yeah, that's all right. Um, right. Couldn't get hold of him. (sighs) Couldn't get hold of him. Anyway, um, we'll start with the big win in Edinburgh because I was there. Um, Hibs won, Hearts nil. Um, Not a good start for Stephen Naismith, but I don't care. Um, Jesus Christ. (laughs) Um, I can't really touch on it too much. It was a game I didn't see uh, because I was working. But it was a game that someone like came up to me at work because I'm so close to like Ed. I think I'm lucky enough to be in that sort of in between Edinburgh Glasgow. Yeah. So it's like people where I am either support Hibs, Hearts, Rangers, Celtic, and then you get the weird ones like me that support Motherwell. <laughs> and um, it's you know people were coming in like, oh, have you seen the score? Have you seen the score? And I was like, oh, let me guess, like four 0 Hearts or some shit. Like it's it's Hibs. Yeah, it's, it's become a regularity. Because I've seen, what, five or six Edinburgh derbies uh, now, and this is the first one I've seen. I've been here, up here since 2018. And it's like, it's just so... You get so used to the point of, like, oh, yeah, Hearts going to win this, Hearts going to win this. I went in this, okay, I thought Hearts were going to battle us like, this time around. But the, the last one I can remember you guys winning was the one at Tynecastle. Well, at Tynecastle... No, I think that was under Lennon still. Daryl Horgan got two goals. I think that was under Lennon. Oh, it might have been. It might have been. Was it yeah. not just in between that? He- I'm sure it was like under Heck. I can remember. Oh yeah, it might have. Yeah. There was all like the flares and stuff in the tunnel. It might have been. Like, yeah. On, on the on the march, it was when you still had since 1875. Like, is your yeah, uh, yeah, it was something group. something around that time. Yeah, but yeah, it's been a long while. Um, but. I think this time around, it, it kind of showed during the game as well. Like, Hearts didn't get that many opportunities going forward. They kind of relied on the counter-attacks. I'm not sure this is the way that Naismith has set them up, because obviously he hasn't had that much time to kind of set them up, because he's only been in, you know, in the role for a few days because of um, Nielsen sacking. Um, but yeah, Hibbs, Hibbs had the majority of the chance, majority of the ball... Hearts didn't really create much kind of from open play. It was just more from the counter kind of thing. But you did always feel that Hibs was sort of comfortable with it. And I haven't had that feeling in any game since the Aberdeen game, really. But in terms of like a, in a derby, you don't really have that. You, it's weird to have that feeling of you've got this kind of thing. Okay, so what I want to touch on then is from a Hibs fan's perspective, and I know that you probably don't care, but in my opinion, as, as a neutral on both sides of the camera, yeah. like, I don't think Hart should have sacked Robbie Nielsen. I think it was a very unjust sacking. Like, I know Hart's fans, I know that a lot of them feel that, obviously, the results hadn't been going their way, and that even when they were going right for them, like even when they were doing well in, in the Conference League, when they were beating Riga and kind of... Yeah. You know, obviously they lost to Fiorentina, but they held, you know, they held their own. Like, they still made the fans kind of proud. They still finished third in that group, yeah. Still third in that group, but it's... it's um, I mean, that was a tough group when you consider the other two teams are Fiorentina and Istanbul... Uh, yeah. So... I to, to go back to, to, to kind of like finish up it's for Hearts fans it was the way the results were going but also like even when they were doing well the football was like so anti-football yeah. like it's just boring football but it's, they still got results when they needed them kind of thing kind of, it's just that because Aberdeen had kind of overtaken them that's I think that's more the reason why he got sacked rather than the actual because Nielsen has been playing that type of football for ever but I think as well I, I think he's like he reminds me of McInnes at Aberdeen yeah. it's like right the football isn't the most eye catching but you're consistently going to get third spot every third season. or fourth yeah, yeah third or fourth um, but I suppose 
I, have a, I do have a feeling that for some Hearts fans, maybe not all of them, but for some of them, is that Nielsen has been on thin ice with them since the Brewer game a few years ago when they lost to them in the Cup. And it, like it, it he hasn't really done that. anything to kind of since then to kind of convince them otherwise. Yeah, there was you know a European journey kind of thing, but that's pretty much what those fans would expect, and it'd be I don't know. I think for Hearts fans, obviously realistically, I think that any Scottish team other than Celtic or Rangers knows that. Knockout European football is highly unlikely. Yeah. Like, even as a Motherwell fan... Even group stage football. I guess now with the Conference League, this does kind of help, but... Even even as a Motherwell fan, I knew that if we got through all those qualifying stages and yeah. didn't have a disaster class against Sligo, realistically, we were going to end up in a group with three other teams that are in, like, more competitive leagues. Yeah, and also... Or, or two other teams in competitive leagues, so like, you know, for example, West West Ham's in the Conference League. Yeah. So we could add someone like West Ham, and then you could add someone like Roma, who I know Roma's Europa League, I'm just... Yeah. You know, like, like an example. Maybe, maybe, someone like... Say Fiorentina, right? So say you've got West Ham, Fiorentina. Motherwell ain't going to go to London or Florence and get a result. No. But then there might be someone in there like... Like, like an RFS, like uh, a, yeah. someone from... RFS, like, Helsinki, like someone like that. You know, like a really kind of on par league. I'm not going to say shitter league because I don't think it is. I think yeah, it's Scot- it's Scottish league's good, but I would say in terms of quality, in of terms football, of we probably in, are on I, par with like. I guess as well, if you take Rangers and Celtic out of the equation, probably on par as a league as well. Possibly, is probably. It, like, yeah, but I think what Hearts fans wanted was at least like that consistency of getting to either getting into Europe, whether that be. Conference League, or if they could, if they could have leapfrogged Rangers at some point, you know, like a Champions mm. League qualifier. Um, I don't think winning the league is really there. Like I think every Scottish team knows that that league because the last, league is locked down. The last team that wasn't Celtic and Rangers to win the league was what Alex, Alex Ferguson's Aberdeen, Aberdeen <laughs> in the eighties. <80s>. So <laughs> that was yeah. You're not famous anymore. <laughs> um, no, it's. We're at the stage now where I think for Hearts fans it's maybe not win the league but at least make a cup final and challenge for a cup. Yeah. Like if they win the cup, that's brilliant. And Nielsen done that. Nielsen got in the two cup finals. One loss to Rangers, one loss to Celtic. Yeah. Um, but it is at the same time like the football is just not, wasn't there. Like attractive football. Yeah, and I guess the same goes as well for Callum Davidson, who was sacked by St Johnson. Like that, he's done amazing things in getting them and winning them those two cups a couple of years ago. But since then, you know, St Johnston have been where sort of they always are in terms of bottom six. Very much yo-yo in between top and bottom six. So yeah, kind of, kind of like I do put this like. They're kind of like the heart of the league. You know, it's like they're not up the top, they're not down the bottom, they just kind of sit in the middle. Yeah. Or we could probably call them, like, I don't know, the appendix, because they don't really have, like, a function. Yeah, they're <laughs> it's just... It's okay if we get rid of them, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, like. but they are... They are five point, uh, four points clear of relegation at the moment, St Johnston, and Hearts are five points off Aberdeen. Like... Is everyone just trying to follow, and I hate to say it, but is everyone just trying to follow, like, the Motherwell model now? Because we were probably the first club to do it this season where we got rid of the manager, brought in a rather unexperienced manager in in Hamill. Obviously, it went kind of tits up really quick. And then you bring in Kettlewell and the results improve. Yeah. Likewise... You know, Aberdeen kind of done the same. Brought in someone from the, the development side of things, and they've they've shot up. And they're now doing really well. And, and uh, who else has done it this season in our league? Well, Rangers have sacked their manager. Rangers sacked their manager, brought in Beal, but that's not really like the that same hasn't really thing. changed anything, really, has it for them? No, they're still second. Um, 
and that's me getting stabbed on the way home this evening. <laughs> um, but it's more... There's only so many that do the youth, like taking someone either from like youth development or taking someone from like you know the coaching side of things yeah. into management. And the only two I can think of right now are Motherwell and Aberdeen. Now Hearts have done the same by yeah. taking Naismith in. But Naismith is only there on an interim basis at the moment. But they're not going to give him the job. I, I, realistically, I, 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 realistically, from seeing what he's said in the post-match conference, he didn't. He didn't sound like he cared about losing to Hibs, which. You know, as a manager of an Edinburgh, like one of the two Edinburgh clubs, you're gonna have to kind of show passion and be like really pissed off that you've lost the derby, especially a derby it, that you haven't it, it, lost it really in four just, years. It did kind of sound like that. Like I seen the conference on sports, it was just kind of like, eh, okay. But it's like, yeah, it's a derby you've not lost in four years. It's also, you know, key word. It's your derby. Right? Exactly. Yeah. You need to be up for it, regardless. Of, I, I know. Maybe it's hard, you know, it's your first game, so you get that kind of first first, first day in the job nerves or anything like that. Yeah. But, like, could you imagine someone like, I, I'm really going to blow this up. Like, I know that the Edinburgh Derby is nowhere near this, but, like, imagine someone like Ancelotti, right? Like, Carlo Ancelotti yeah. or Xavi, right? And, and El Clasico just lost, like, 3 0 to either, you know, Real Madrid or Barcelona, yeah. and then they come out and go, eh. Meh. Yeah. Like, it doesn't work, it doesn't make sense. It'd be the same if Beal came out and done that after losing 3 0 to Celtic or Postacoglu Post- done yeah. that after a 3 0 loss to Rangers. It doesn't make sense for him to come out and just not give a fuck. Yeah, exactly. So I think for that reason, he's not really. I think he just knows that I'm just here to steady the ship. He probably knows that he's, up, he's, he's, he's gonna be up. already up. up. Yeah. And, you know, outside of Scotland, that's not the only managers who have been sacked since we done the last episode of this podcast which lets us move really nicely into the English Premier League um, it feels like it's been a while so yeah Jesus right let's just go through everyone that's been sacked and um, it's at this point I'd like Billy Joel's We Didn't Start the Fire <laughs> so we have Antonio Conte Yes, uh, I think that happened just after. Just after the first. Part. No, just before. Sorry, I think. Is that possibly. Just before. Possibly, possibly just before, but. Or were we talking about him having that go at Southampton? I, I can't remember. It's oh, been too long. Con- Conte's gone either way. Conte. We've also got rid. Of Potter. Pot- Graham Potter. We've got rid of Brendan Rodgers. Brendan Rodgers, yeah. And um, we've also, in this time... Well, I think that's everyone. I think that is everyone, yeah. But yeah. Is, no, is there anyone else? Uh, so it's been that many seconds. It's, and it's also been so long since we've done this. Well, it hasn't even been that long, really. But I'm sure when we were talking... Yeah. Because I think when we were talking about Spurs, we were t- it was about the same time that the... Your DOF was getting done for it, yeah. and then the Calciopoli. Yeah, so I think it was just after over. just after Conte got sacked. But yeah, Brendan Rodgers is gone. Graham Potter's gone. Um, now the Graham Potter one, I kind of understand in terms of, you know, he wasn't getting the results, and Chelsea should have, you know, they shouldn't be tenth a, a team that has the amount of investment that Chelsea's done in it. They should be eleventh as they are at the moment. But bringing in someone who... <laughs> bringing in Frank Lampard. What the fuck? <laughs> There's really no way to describe that, is there? It's, this is he, hasn't won, he hasn't won a game since he's been in charge. So four games he's been in charge. Um, lost to Wolves. Lost to Real Madrid. Lost to Brighton. That's lost to the second day to Real Madrid. Good as well. Yeah. I mean, right. Take the Real Madrid games out of perspective. I don't think Chelsea's ever going to beat Real Madrid in the current climate, right? Yeah. Real Madrid are... Okay. I... I Realistically, I know that there's like City fans that think we're going to win the Champions League. You're not going to win the Champions League. Real Madrid have the Champions League locked down until Ancelotti either smokes himself out with a cigar or, or moves his eyebrows the- are shaved off or, or, or <laughs> something or he just moves into that Brazil job that he's rumoured yeah. with, right? Real Madrid have got the Champions League locked down and I'm not putting money on that at any point right now. 
because I know that a few people just start tweeting like at false nineties, uh, Lewis Souls. We don't get any tweets anyway. It's fine. <laughs> 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 at false nineties, Lewis Souls is fifty quid. Uh, as you said, Real Madrid will win the Champions League. It's like they will. Okay, realistically, City will lose the semi final, and the first one of the nine clubs. It's, it's probably going to be, I reckon, Inter Milan Real Madrid final is what I would say. Anyway, that does sound face tasty. Sounds Any tasty. of the combination of the four does t- sound tasty, to be honest. But I'm not going to like talk about the Champions League too much. I think the Frank Lampard issue right now is that you've brought in a manager who, yes, got you top four. Yes. And yes... He did top four with no well, during a no transfer, transfer ban. No transfer And I ban. think that first season he was there, he did very well as a manager. Especially his, his season at Derby as well, I think is underrated. Um, and then we have to use one word after that. Everton. Uh, yeah. But, again, with Everton, it is a bit of a poison chalice. Like, you could, uh, I think you could kind I, of bring him into a bit of a, a shit a bit more than they should be. Definitely. But then... How many times have Everton signed a manager that, like, either a young, up-and-coming, promising manager, or they sign, like, a, a legend of the game? Yeah. You know, so let's just go through like the last four managers of Everton. Ancelotti Ancel- was able to get a tune out of them. Was able to get a tune out of them. Rafa Benitez, shit show. Shit show, yeah. Lampard, Lampard shit, shit show. show. Sean Dyche has a bit of a tune out of them, but not a little bit. Yeah, like it's, I, think it's still... that, I, I think the problems at Everton lie more with the board and the signings and the money, yeah. more than the managerial quality. That being said, that does not mean that I'm here to kiss Frank Lampard's arse and say that you you deserve a Chelsea job, mate. You don't. The only realistic candidate, I think, for that job, out of the two that have been interviewed for it, from what's been, from what's been whispered, reported, yeah. whispered about in... Well, for Brits who are his Twitter feed, basically. Right, <laughs> much. It's, it's the only place I now go for football. Yeah. Because you know it's going to happen. And the only possible here we goes are... Um, Luis Enrique, the old Spain manager, Spain, Barcelona, Barcelona manager. and Julian Nagelsmann from Bayern and RB Leipzig. And Hoffenheim as well, yeah. But then there's and also, Hoffenheim. yeah, we sort of spoke about the Nagelsmann situation last time around. Um, Enrique is also one that's been linked to Spurs as well. And also, some that's been linked to Spurs and Chelsea, and there was reports early on, uh, I think it was early on today, that Chelsea have approached Maurizio Pochettino. Can I throw in the even more like batshit one you told me yesterday? Oh, Spurs God. have approached Will Still. Yes, there <laughs> have been there have been reports from Italy that Spurs have approached Will Still, which is just a fucking meme, and it would be so Tottenham to do that. Would you want it though, right? You think about it. So currently, um, Stade de Clan in Liga in France pay I think it's 25,000 euros every single game but I think the, because he doesn't have a pro license I think the rules are different in England though is if you don't have a pro license you have to basically promise that you'll do it in the off season um. instead of getting fined for it because that's what happened with um, that's what happened with someone else recently um, I think it was Bruno Salteri who was interim manager at Chelsea. Mm-hmm. So they let him come in as long as he does his pro badge at the end of the season. At the end of the season when he's basically got time to do it. Then in that case, I would I would give him a go. Yeah. I think he's he's young, like very young. But he's only eight years older than me. Yeah, he's, he's, he's he is only thirty. But the, the guy clearly knows what he's doing. He has clearly got a brain for football. And he, yeah, he used to work as an analyst kind of thing. And he's, uh, you know... It, just... I reckon, I reckon give him five years first and then go for him. Because I think if you looked at what Potter did, maybe this isn't the best example, but he went from Ostersund to Swansea to Brighton and then made the jump to Chelsea too soon... I reckon if Will Still goes from, I think he was like bouncing around the uh, the Belgian leagues, and this is his like first full time job is Stade Rennes manager. 
going from there to a club the size of Tottenham is probably too big of a jump at this point in his career. I'm just going to look at Will Stills, you know, kind of managerial career. So, so far, he has been in charge of uh, Lierse. Yep. As assistant, uh, who are obviously in Belgium, from Lier. Um, he was then in charge of Beershaw. Uh, the club that famously Warren Shankland played for in Belgium. Oh yeah, when he was be- when he still is uh, when he was being a vaccine dodger and still is. Yeah, um, he was then assistant manager at Ham, and then assistant manager at Standard Liège, before going back to Ham as stand as assistant manager, and then obviously now he is the manager of Ham. But um, in other batshit crazy managerial appointments. I have to say this. this is, what's this? Dean Smith. Oh yes, I forgot about that. <laughs> Fucking Dean Smith and John Terry at Leicester. <laughs> we have You're a man fucking going down. <laughs> <laughs> we have a man who fucked it with Norwich and a man who fucked, fucked it with Norwich in the championship. Fucked it with Norwich in the championship and a man that fucked Wayne Bridges. Wife. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> I, uh, I I just I just I just don't know what to say. Like I can't describe. The thing how is, I, feel. I understand. I kind of understand the Roger stacking, but it'd been kind of coming all season, pretty much. But it's Brandy. Like if there's one man I trust to keep us in the prem, like barely, it's Brendan. It's not Dean Smith. It's not Dean Smith. John Terry. Oh yeah, and I forgot to add in Craig Shakespeare, the man who was interim manager when we sacked Ranieri and was, that was fucking shit. That was yeah, that was, was again a stupid fucking decision. Fucking hideous, right? I would have took back fucking Pearson, <laughs> right? I would have took Pearson. Pearson, the man who almost saved Watford from relegation a few years ago. The man who almost saved Watford from relegation. The man who famously sat there in a Leicester tracksuit and called someone an ostrich, right? <laughs> This is a man that I would quite happily have. At Isn't club. he Bristol City manager now, or something like that? I'm sure he's like in the lower leagues of England. But either way, we should have probably had a punt on him over yeah. Dean Smith. Bristol City. Other managers that are currently vacant that could have probably came to Leicester. Okay, we're not going to get Nagelsmann. We're not going to get Enrique. Uh, but there are reports that um, what's his face, American guy Jesse Marsh Jesse reject- Marsh. rejected. Yeah, I think. I think he rejected, rejected it. Rejected it. And I would have loved Jesse Marsh, right? Because Jesse Marsh was doing all right at Leeds. I think it was a very unjust sacking. And he could, I mean, the man got a tune out of Salzburg and developed... Well, was part of the development squad for one of the best strikers now in the world. And what was a really scary front three? And look at look at where Minamino... That, fr- that front so three of Juan Hee Chan, Haaland and Minamino. Minamino is at Monaco, Monaco now. After Pankey. a failed spell at Liverpool, yep. Pang's at Wolves, Wolves doing okay, and then Erling Holland's Erling Holland. Yeah. So, I would have took Jesse Marsh. Other managers that I would now probably take a punt on that are sacked, right? I have been sacked and are like available for approaching, right? So, a man that's not been in the game for a while, Andre Villas Boas. Yeah. And the other one that I would try I don't think he would come to Leicester but just in like the honour of getting Italian managers in I think you know what I'm going to say Antonio Conte I don't want fucking Conte <laughs> right? but um, okay uh, okay tell you what little, little quick quiz I'll give you like some of the clubs he's managed right Offie Crete Napoli oh Leicester. Gennaro Gennaro Gattuso we've got to get Gattuso right because <laughs> Can you imagine us in a 3 0 loss to Wolves and he's just there like, sometimes I may be good, sometimes maybe shit. Right? That's what I need, right? That is what I need at the club. But realistically, a man that may. is now also rumoured, right? This is actually in the rumours. Oh no. Is Ange. Big Ange. He was in the rumours for his first job as well. And to be honest. I would fucking take him. But would he leave Celtic? After, um, after the last person to leave Celtic and go to Leicester, would he would Ange do exactly the same thing? I doubt it. We're also linked with Neil Lennon. 
<laughs> well, when you also linked with Martin O'Neill, no, yeah, Martin O'Neill as well. Who yeah, knows? I feel like I feel like the, the Leicester board just sit there, right, and just go go through the Wikipedia page of who used just, to be a manager at Leicester. <laughs> no, just who used to be a manager at Celtic. Like, <laughs> it's just ridiculous. But yeah, realistically, we're going down. We are going. We're going down. Um, Premier League. It's been fun. We've had some great memories. Um, Let's just look at the table right now. So Leicester yeah. currently nineteenth, twenty five points. We are two four, points off safety. We are four points off safety. Two points. Comfortably safe. I, okay. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say Leeds are comfortably safe or twenty nine. I wouldn't say West Ham are co- safe with thirty one. I look think at, when you Palace look at are safe. I think Wolves and Bournemouth are possibly safe as well. Um, okay. But you just look at who Leicester's playing next. Ironically, it is Wolves. That's quite funny. Yeah. But right. Let's look at let's look at the next seven games for Leicester, right? That's, that's because our fixture list is fucked. Okay. We have got. Uh, da, 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 da. In our next seven games, we got Leeds away. Okay. Wolves at home. We got a relegation six pointer against Everton. We got Fulham, who are going to fucking hump us. Liverpool, we're getting humped. Newcastle. Don't even bother asking. And West Ham again, last game of the season. Last game of the season. Relegation six pointer. We're going down. Yeah, we are going Dean down. Smith, yeah, under Dean Smith, we're fucking going down. Can yeah. you sack an interim manager? <laughs> I don't know, but I'd give it a good fucking go. <laughs> right. And you know what the thing is? Leicester's a weird one because in scenarios like this, if this was Motherwell, I would get pissed at the board. If this was Hibs, you would get pissed at the board. If this was Spurs, you'd get pissed at, at, at Levy. I'm pissed at Daniel Levy. I mean, yeah, you're always either. pissed at Daniel Levy. But you can't get pissed at the Leicester board because of how much they've done for the club. Yeah, and what they've been through as well. And with, what they've been through. With uh, some beach eye, you know, dying in that helicopter. Hel- place. In the you, can't, you can't be mad at that board because they've done so much for Leicester and they've done so much for the community as well. Obviously, without without having Thai owners and and the and the chai, it's without that there would never have been the twenty sixteen season. We would, we I never don't think won, you, you never would have been promoted in the first place from the championship. We would never got out of the championship. We would have never had that dreamland season, and we wouldn't be as strong financially as we are now. Yeah, we wouldn't have had such a nice stadium. We wouldn't have had some of the signings that we've some made. Some of the European football. Some of the European nights. Some of the, uh, the new new training centre as well, which you know was funded by their Uruguay money. All all the redevelopment that's been done, and even just in like the town itself. Yeah, like, and, and I mean, and it's it's just a. It's a sad scenario to watch us go down, but I can see us coming up, back up. Is it one of those where you kind of go down do a full reset, of, like what Burnley have done? I think that's what we need. Like what Burnley have done, I they've got rid of Sean Dice, they've got rid of like the, the 4-4-2, you know, play it long, direct kind of football, replacing it with Vincent Company's kind of pep-inspired stuff with Burnley. Do Le- Leicester need something like that? Realistically, I think if we go down, we're going to get a lot of money because players are going to leave. Like, I don't think James Madison will stick around if we go down. I don't think Vardy I, I f- might stick around because I think Var- there's a possibility Vardy will retire sooner rather than later as well. But realistically, I would say players that will definitely leave if we go down. Yuri Tielemans. I think he's off anyway. He's off regardless. James Madison will leave. Probably go to Arsenal, I think. Mm. Um, Harvey Barnes? Well, Harvey... I think most of the team would leave, if I'm being honest. Like, Kagwa Sionshu probably goes as well. Like, yeah, the goalkeepers will stay because they're shit. Fais, I hope, leaves. <laughs> like, I've never, I've never seen a man play fucking centre-back worse. And I've watched us play fives. <laughs> you've seen you've seen me and Andy I've defend. I've seen you and Andy defend, and you could still do a better job for Leicester. <laughs> like it's fucking brutal. This is like a proper meltdown now. I'm having like the big Leicester meltdown, but 
Yeah, there, there's literally... Don't worry, I've got some rants coming out. Oh, there, there's worry. nothing else I can say other than... I think we're going down, but I would have to agree. I think we should get in, like, a young manager, right? Like, well, still. He's not going to leave for Stade Rennes for the championship, is he? No, there's no way he's going to leave League One. Uh, League One, sorry, for... Probably give it two seasons, actually. He'll be leaving League One for League One. Um, <laughs> uh, do you know... If I'm being realistic... Okay, this is going to sound like absolutely bad shit. We go down, Vardy retires, Vardy, give him a go. Give him a go as a manager. If he wants to do management, give him a fucking go. That why, would be... Why the fuck not at this point? Or see, see if Kante is like totally injury fuck. Bring Kante back at West. <laughs> or, I'm going to be even more bad shit, Colo Turi. Bring Colo Turi back as manager. You know what? It's not a terrible shout. He played under... Played under Rodgers, coached under Rodgers, was Wigan manager for a bit, which people seem to forget, and came back to Leicester. Yeah. And then left again. Um, and now no one knows where he is. Or... Do... do go for the meme here, because Colo's brother Yaya is a coach at Spurs. Do Leicester go for the absolute meme and get Kono and Yaya as a management duo in the championship? <laughs> Can you imagine the chant coming back? <laughs> you imagine your manager and your assistant manager coming out to Yaya, yeah. Yaya, 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 to the cool road. You know, like that one. Like, that's not fucking... Oh, God. I would rate that, though. Or... I think we're never going to get someone like, I think City are lucky, like Man City's lucky in the position that they are, yeah. because I think realistically if Pep leaves, companies kind of lined up to go into yeah. that role now, we don't have someone like that. Like, Well, I don't think most clubs do, to be honest, have that kind of like... There's no Leicester legend I can think of right now that's managing. Do you know what, fuck it, if we can pull Gary Lineker off match of the day, <laughs> the touchline, right? I mean, him, him, and uh, Micah Richards as assistant. <laughs> but um, I think I've ranted enough about this one. Um, obviously, we touched on Conte in the last one. I mean, oh, he's going back to Juve anyway. To be honest, but I reckon he's going back to Italy somewhere. Yeah. Also, we're not going to have time to cover it too much on this. But Juve have got their fifteen points back after appeal. Fuck you, they fuck the Serie A. Why would you give them? Why would you take the points away, then give them back to kind of like artificially make a title race? Stupid. Anyway, um, I have some more rants to have in terms of the Negrera case. So in Spain, Barcelona have been accused of making payments to um, some guy called Negrera, who was the former head of referees. Uh, in Spain for from I think, I think about the mid 2000s up until about 2018 um, and so this has been going on for a couple of months these kind of accusations and cases behind it and Joanne uh, Porter the president of Barcelona came out today or the, a couple of days ago to kind of defend the case and when he mentioned later on uh, during this thing that uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a case of Real Madrid have also, you know, they've also had favour with the referees in the past. Like, some of the former heads of refereeing have been ex-Real Madrid players or fans or managers or anything of the like. And then said Real Madrid had been the club of the regime. And now, I've written about this on false90s.wordpress.com years ago. Uh, there's also an excellent book about it um, by Sid Lowe as well. But Real Madrid coming out with this video and kind of said, oh no, Barcelona with the club of the regime. Here's some proof and some fail veiled, fi uh, finely veiled things about how Franco was like a member of Barcelona, like given honorary membership of Barcelona and all that kind of stuff, which is mental. So I just I want to I want to come in on this. I've obviously done a little bit of Spanish at uni, done a yeah. little bit of Spanish history. Okay, so for anyone that doesn't know who Franco was, okay, 
You've probably been under a rock, let's be real honest. Yeah. Okay. Basically, the Hitler of Spain, I think yeah. it's the easiest it's way to kind of... probably the best way to describe it. Um, there is numerous films, there's numerous books about sort of life at the time, but basically, just before World War II, there was a war between Republicans and Roy- Royalists, yeah. basically, and, and Nationalists, um, and... Sorry, not na- Sorry, Republicans were in charge. Is there yeah. a war between Republicans and Nationalists? Republicans who were loyal to the Spanish regime yeah. and Nationalists who wanted to kind of get rid of the Republican system, the government, and overthrow kind of the, the monarchy in, in a way. Um, and bring in a basically a fascist leader. Bring in a fascist leader. Free, free. That last. So 1939 it was only a couple months after the end of the Spanish Civil War that World War II starts in Europe. Spain don't get involved. Spain don't get involved because Franco doesn't want to get involved. But at the same time, Franco is known to have heavily suppressed the Catalan people. Catalan and the Basque. And so, the Basque. So one of the biggest things against this was just the year after Franco died, but still that this kind of like fascist thing was in place in the mid-70s. The Basque in the Basque army between Atletico Bilbao and Real Sociedad, they come up with the Basque flag, still illegal, but as a massive show of like support for the you know Basque identity and everything. And that's so Franco removed people, like kind of removed regional identities. You know, so you, in Spain you've got Catalonia, Andalusia, Galicia, um, and the Basque, Basque country, and then obviously the rest are relatively kind of okay with being linked to Madrid. Yeah. But the Basque region has fought for its independence several times. Catalonia's fought for its independence yeah. several times. Um obviously I don't can I don't support in any way, you know, any terrorist activities related to that session in the Basque region. You've got ETA um to don't ex- really exist anymore. They're now more political motivated, but they have done some nasty shit in the past, um, which I don't support obviously. But to go back to the, the football of this, that the whole reason that El Clasico is El Clasico is because it is seen as being Barcelona see themselves as like the resistance of the, the regime and the Franco movement and the politics of Spain and the the royal family against a club that is backed by fascism and Franco and the royal family and the Spanish government and yeah. For Real Madrid to come out and say that Barcelona was the club of Franco is just totally, so that, totally so that, false. So their kind of excuses were Barcelona won the most cups and leagues in the Franco regime, which is there's nothing to do with that. that, that okay, but that would be like me you now coming out and saying that Celtic were the club of Nicola Sturgeon because they won all the cups when Sturgeon was first minister. You, you, that, yeah. That's how that sounds. I'm not saying Stur- Sturgeon's a dictator, right? But <laughs> that's how that sounds. That's yeah. how that sounds. It, um, it'd be like. So they also said about the honorary membership being given from Barcelona to Franco. That was because the president before that of Barcelona was murdered by the regime and then they had to put a new president in place who was pro-regime. Who to, gave Franco... Who gave Franco the honorary membership. So that's just kind of like... Basically putting in a puppet... Yeah. Of your regime anyway. Because so, they wanted to, you know, not get murdered. So they put in someone who was a, you know, a bit more pro-Franco. And, you know... Yeah, shit like that. But the most important thing of this is that... Did Barcelona win a El Clasico 11-1? No, they didn't. Because Real Madrid did under Franco... Because the Barcelona players were threatened during the during the match and okay. at half time and everything, it's let's, just mental. Let's just let's just look at the club names here, okay? Barcelona in, in Spanish or well, yeah. in Catalan is FC, FCB. Yeah. Football Club de Barcelona. In Catalan. In Catalan as well, it's Football Club de Barcelona. Yeah. In Spanish, Real Madrid is Real Madrid CF Club de Foot. Club de foot. Oh. Which is, under under Franco as well, they made everything Spanish and not Catalan and not Basque and everything. So they had to call it Atletico Bilbao. They had to call it Club de Foot Barcelona, not Football Club de Barcelona, Barcelona which is the yeah. Catalan. So, yeah. 
And it, but it, it's I think what what stands out here is the club is called Real yeah. Madrid. It's not Madrid CF. It's not. They are so they have Real because they are like the club of the royal family. Well, yeah, they're, they're, they're given, given the title royal patronage. The, yeah. yeah, royal patronage. And I know there's other clubs like that in every region of Spain, which was done by Franco to suppress. No, it was done by the royal family at first, but Franco. Franco had a part in it. It was to kind of suppress the regional things. That's why mm. you have Real Betis. Real that's Sociedad. Why you have Real Sociedad. You've got Real Sociedad. The lead, the lead, yeah. So there's, there's like a lot of, um, I think RCD Mallorca as well. I'm sure is Real. Yeah, the, I think it's possibly, Real. Yeah. I think it's Real. And just look, look, Real look, look go through people. the clubs on like FIFA or Football Manager over there. Every club that has a crown on it is a Real club. Most important. That's the easiest way to describe yeah. it. So what I'm trying to say is, is like the royal family linked to Franco. Thus, Real Madrid have got a stronger link to Franco than fucking. FC Barcelona exactly, yeah. Barcelona ever did and the thing is about this so Real Madrid started out putting off the Spanish version um, Barcelona the press and media uh, um, like the club so Real Madrid the club itself put this out which is mental so put it out in Spanish at first uh, press in Catalonia and like the club of Barcelona are like no you need to take this down because it is just falsely wrong Real Madrid then posted it in English as a response which is just dumb and it's just kind of bubbled it just keeps on bubbling 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 from there and it's a case of where do we go from here because Real Madrid are, are literally spreading fake news about <laughs> it's just it's just mental they're just spreading these fake kind of narratives against you know Barcelona who in, in a case where it's about the ref is kind of taking away from the refereeing kind of the case it started with is the case with Aguero. Are Real Madrid trying to do this in a similar way that Juve tried to detract from the whole match fix and like the Calciopoli stuff back in the day? Possibly. So, and I think all we can really do with this is that I know the the pot will continue to boil. It's Barcelona and Real Madrid. It's always going to boil. It's always going to boil and it will boil until the end of football. They're, they're two clubs that literally just hate each other based on political, national identity. There's so much stuff we could talk. We could have a podcast just talking about why El Clasico is so big. Yeah. It's not to do with viewership figures. It's not to do with how big the two teams are. It's literally to do with politics. And I think as two Scottish people here right now, yeah, the all we can really do is sit back and wait and see what happens. But yeah. in my opinion, from what I can see... UV done this as well during the Calcio yeah. scandal. They were like, "Oh, but AC Milan and you know, they, you know, there's stuff with AC Milan, stuff with Inter, there's stuff with Roma, there's stuff with Napoli." They just kind of started to kind yeah. of pass the ball about when they were the most guilty of it, obviously, and ended up in Serie B. I'm not saying that that's going to happen to Real Madrid or Barcelona or Barcelona, but I think something will come out at some point about you know. Someone will have done something at some yeah. point. I've, I've, I mean, it's football, the Spanish game's not that heavily regulated, but I think what will change it, and I'm going to touch on it quickly, is if La Liga allow the salary cap to be modified slightly for yeah. Barcelona to re-sign Messi from PSG. Now, is that the right thing to do to sign a man who okay yes just won a World Cup still club very legend. much very much a prime of his game and is a club legend but he is about to turn 36 the <laughs> thing is re Messi for Barcelona Barcelona have such a good kind of team at the moment in terms of they are winning the league which is genuinely so big for them they haven't won this league since 2019 um <clears throat> This team they have at the moment is so well, <clears throat> so well gelled together that, like, what do you do from here, kind of thing? Like, what do you what? If you add Messi to that, you're kind of upsetting the apple cart in a way. You're kind of, you're gonna now kind of bow down to Messi, build the team around Messi again, who's then gonna leave in a couple of months when he, you know, eventually retires. So, or a couple of years when he eventually retires. So, what's the point in kind of re-signing him? Personally, what I would like to see is a heroic turn to Nuno Zolpi in Argentina. 
and he can, you know, win the Copa Libertadores and do something fun there. Um, there's also has there also been an offer from Al Hilal as well, who we are the rivals of Al Nasser in Saudi Arabia. I think I've seen something about that, but ideally, you know, Messi's not going to stay at PSG, is he? I don't think. I think the PSG adventure is over mainly because. PSG have reached the point now where they want to ship out the big money signings yeah. and kind of reinvent the club's identity because the whole reason that they were doing the big money signings, the likes of Neymar, Mbappe, Messi, I mean, obviously Donnarumma, Ramos were on freeze, but the reason they were making all these big money player signings to try and win a Champions League, that dream is very much over. Yeah, I and it's always... Um, yeah. And it's, it's always been one of those things like Man City that they can kind of get a hand on but never get yeah. two hands on um, obviously PSG did reach a final under Thomas Tuchel against Bayern and then Bayern won but as the City have been in two finals now as well one final one final the final against Chelsea yeah. in Porto which they lost 1-0 yeah. from the Kai Havertz uh, yeah. goal but I think at this stage for PSG it's very much we're going to build the team around Kylian Mbappe. Kylian Mbappe and kind of move everyone else, move everyone else on. Um, they have spoke about getting rid of Neymar for the like, majority of the season yeah. because they want to free up the wage budget. If Messi goes, it frees up a massive bit of the wage budget. And then allegedly, and I don't know if it's true, they have been like linked with Marcus Rashford. Okay, okay. It's a, which it's I can smart, understand. It's a smart signing, I think. I it's know, a, it's a smart there's a smart signing because it lets you still play Mbappe through the middle. The right side, I think, will go out to Vitinha. Yeah. They'll probably move Vitinha forward, and then you can play. You probably need a new centre mid, I think. I think Verratti's a bit getting older. Uh, you still have a very promising young left back in Nuno Mendes. You've still got Kempembe and Marquinhos. I mean, Marquinhos is obviously getting old as well. Ramos, I think, will retire at the end of the season. Yeah. Donnarumma still very young. Um, we'll move on to we'll move on to we'll Hakim, move on to Andrew Tate at right back um, very shortly. But I think from a PSG perspective, they'll want to lose Messi, and they're okay with that. Yeah, I don't think the fans will be okay with that. But in terms of the board, who now want to save money and have said since since Galtier came in that they want to not be the big money club, they want to be a Parisian yeah. club and quintessentially bringing up the young talents because I think a lot of it comes from the fact that of how much money they spent on Mbappe when Mbappe himself is from Paris. Paris, yeah. And if they had put him through the youth development system before he went to Monaco, he went to Monaco and done what he did, he wouldn't have had to shell out. Was it 110, 150 million? It was, so I think about 190, 170, 180 million. I think it was so much more than that. Um. It's very much, um, I'm just going to double check my Mbappe history, but as far as I'm aware, I'm sure Mbappe... I think he's, yeah, I think he was a, a lot more... Yeah, so Mbappe, Mbappe was AS Bondi, uh, Bondi, which is in Paris. Yeah. Then straight into the Monaco youth system. If PSG picked if him PSG up, had picked him up when he was at Bondi, he would have smashed it probably yeah. at PSG. Probably they would have saved themselves that so much more so money. much more money. And likewise, Neymar only really went to Paris for the paycheck. Let's be real, right? Yeah, like, and to kind of make himself a he wanted to be the main man. Yeah, and how did they repay him? By putting by him in. Him in in Messi's shadow and Mbappe's shadow as well. Yeah. Um, obviously, we're going to touch on French football later, and I've kind of really sw swung the Messi thing back into this, but Messi at Barcelona, I don't agree with. I probably would agree with you. Neural's old boys, enter Miami. Enter Miami's one. been linked, yeah. I don't want to see him go to Saudi and stat pad. I think yeah. there's, there's one man that's already doing that, and... He very much is quite happy to do that. Yeah. Um, I have no idea. Oh, whatever. Um, yeah, uh, so in terms of PSG, looking at their right back, um, it's time to have a little rant about this because... I think it's more of a rant, this one. I feel like this one's more of a chat. It's a little bit, a little bit of a rant. So reports 
so the reports came out that uh, Hakimi's uh, Ashraf Hakimi's wife will be uh, divorcing him. Um, apart, uh, the reports go that it's because of this whole sexual assault case that we spoke about last time. And now, adding on to this was the reports from Barstool Football. Now, if you get your news from Barstool Football, which is dumb, but then people Sam, started to pile Sam, on on this. And it, I, just, I just want to put for the record here, right? Like, at no point, if one of us gets married, right, do we start putting the assets in each other's names, right? No, I it's not. It's not going to happen, right? If I wake up one day and find out that Sam's fucking Bugatti when he's made millions off the False Nineties podcast, <laughs> my fucking name. That's the biggest joke that I've ever you said. You imagine I'm just knocking on the fucking... Like, like, you know, in the words of a man who we're going to compare Hakimi to, right? You imagine you, me being like, oh, am I coming on the podcast this week? Like, where's your Bugatti? You know, but it's like, yeah. And it's so Andrew Tate, isn't it? Like, yeah. the man is... It, it, it's, it's sort of... It's, it's, what, it's what's happened is afterwards is the amount of people kind of lauding Hakimi for this is the fact that, oh, oh, he's such a... He doesn't have to give anything to his wife in the divorce. Blah, blah, blah. When people were ignoring the massive elephant in the room, where is that is... The reports are like, literally fucking raped someone. <laughs> like, why... You cannot fucking defend that no matter what. Then why are you defending him for kind of... Not, put, you know, giving anything to his wife in the divorce, which is totally valid, by the way. It's just... It's... So fucking dumb, and also it's not a thing. You cannot put your assets in your mum's name to I kind just, of awa- wanna, get away I from. I want to go back to it, right? Like, th- like not the, the the wife scenario, okay? But can we just go back to the actual like crime here, right? Why is the man still allowed to play for PSG and for Morocco with such a high-profile investigation? In the same they have evidence because if they didn't have evidence of it, they wouldn't be doing a fucking investigation into such a high profile footballer. But so clearly PSG have evidence, which they have to fucking sack them there and then. Okay, okay, and um, um but look, I know look, there's look. a there's a certain club down in Tain and Weir that also continued to play a footballer when he had high profile allegations and the chairman had the fucking police report. Yes, I'm talking about Sunderland. Sunderland and, and Adam Johnson. And Adam Johnson. But do you see what I'm trying to say? Yeah, but at? look look at what Man United did with Mason Greenwood, they suspended him. Look what uh, Everton did with Sigurdsson, Sigurdsson, suspended him and let his contract run out. Look what Manchester City did with Ben Mendy. Suspended him and let his contract run out. Let his contract run out. Again Arsenal, you can't defend here because the report's about Thomas Party. He's playing every single game. I am just dumbfounded how that's being allowed to happen. I'm, I'm sorry to bring this one up, but one of your players is... Yves Basuma, I think... But was that clear? That was clear because he wasn't actually... It was his mate that was doing stuff, not him. Kind of, I can't remember that kind of thing, but that yeah. was when he was at Brighton anyway. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's something... I'm not entirely sure about that situation, but, but yeah. I get, I get what you're trying to say. It's like every high-profile footballer that was accused of like something to do with SA or rape or anything like any, that. Any, so, any sort of any crime sort of way. Crime way that's you've... like really, really serious. Like a really serious and look, like, like mentally affecting crime. But like, look at what, like, Marcus Alonso wasn't suspended for literally killing someone in a traffic accident. He was, you know, just paid a fine to the family. Like. I think there's like a borderline where things are okay, right? So for example, like I'll, I'll give the example that was it Bruno Guimaraes got a speeding ticket this year? Like something yeah, like that. Like uh, Hugo Lloris has done Hugo that. Has and, uh, tickets. People have got speeding tickets. People have been done for drink driving and I think it's football. John Linton, I think it done for drink driving, I think it was, yeah. Yeah. So in that perspective, right, we can probably like look them in the eyes and say, right, well, there's plenty of people in the UK that get done for drink driving. There's plenty of people in the UK that get done for speeding. Yeah. Like, there's probably more, you know. But there's at no point that I, I looked at Mason Greenwood, David Goodwillie, Adam Johnson. I mean, the Gelfie thing was never really, like, it was proven. Really, it was high profile. Weird. Yeah, but even, like, even then, Ben Mendy's been cleared, hasn't been re-signed. Yeah. Um, Mason Greenwood 
in the case has kind of it fell away. Fell away, yeah. Uh, and but again, he hasn't been played for Man United since. He hasn't even been spe- seen in training, kind of thing. Gilfie Sigerson has also now been cleared of his things, but obviously he's not going to get re-signed by Everton, kind of thing. It's uh, it's a really difficult one that when a man's this like much of a cunt. You're still playing him. Yeah. When PSG have backups, they have Nordi Mukiele, who's you know pretty, pretty good. good. I'm not saying right in any way, shape, or form that the problem here is that <coughs> PSG aren't playing Mukiele. Okay, that's like nothing to do with it. It's more the fact that PSG are continuing to play a man who's like wanted by French police for yeah. and and is under investigation. He's under house arrest as well, isn't he? Something like that. It's a, that's a difficult one. I think they said he couldn't leave France, but then he was played, for Morocco. Then played for Morocco. In Morocco, yeah. Also, I'm, I'm going to say it now, right? <clears throat> Fogden. The fact that he's got a fucking photo with him. When you know what's going on and you take a fucking photo with him. Yeah. It's, it's a bit fucking sad. Dis- yeah, it's disgusting, really. Like, you cannot I'm lord a man who's done those, who has those reports against him, kind of thing. It's, right. it's Look, I, I, I totally understand that, I, and I know that like fogden has got like a big brand deal now with the Moroccan tourism board because of all the the World Cup content, and this is why he's been to like. But get Pass photos with Yusuf and the series. Get, 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 get photos with El Nasiri. Get photos with Zia. Get photos with. Like, like, fuck it, like, do me, like, yeah, Bonu, 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 Bo- Bonu, yeah, Bonu, Bo- Bo- Bonu. The, the goalkeeper, right? But like, yeah, not the U two singer, the goalkeeper. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. We're for without you. No, <laughs> yeah, no, but it's yeah. Don't get full with Hakimi. Like Hakimi is. Okay, Hakimi, good footballer, right? Probably the Morocco's best player, but he's also. Done these a things and has, rape. yeah, and he has these reports against him. But you cannot defend that in any way, shape, or form. You cannot lord someone who's done that. Even then, if you have the whole, oh, he's such a top G for put, uh, he's not going to give his wife any money. Uh, so it's just, it, it's it just, has now been um, confirmed by Marca in Spain. Yeah, um, that. Hakimi is not signing his assets over. It's just that the man's worth that much money, and because he's so young, his mum controls the budget. Yeah, but even then, but even that doesn't mean that she owns his assets. That just means she helps manage his money. Exactly. But even if she, even if she did own the assets, even if it went through the whole divorce process, it's still the, the, it's still his stuff. It's still you know going to be proven that this has been moved across because of the divorce reports. That, you know you. His wife would get the money in the divorce. It's it's so stupid. So this is the um, this is now another one from Marka. Um, just to go back to it as well. Uh, Ashraf Hakimi praised by Andrew Tate. Who's That's a red flag. Right there. That. That's a crowdfunding funding lawsuit. Hakimi maintained his innocent after a woman accused him of SA. PSG defender Hakimi made headlines Friday amid a divorce from model actress Hiba Abouk. Andrew top praise from controversial public figure Andrew Tate. Hakimi, 24, maintained his innocence after a woman of the same age accused him of essaying her at his house on February 25th when Abouk was gone with the children. Abouk, 36, fucking hell, Hakimi's a toy boy, um, filed for divorce shortly after and requested to keep half of his assets. Tate, 36, gave his nod of approval to the Moroccan star with a comment under an article on Twitter detailing Hakimi's secret from his wife. My G commented Tate, who calls himself the top, top G. G. Oh my God, if, if you're getting lauded by Andrew Tate, you have failed as a person. That's At the there. same time, Andrew Tate's accusers are crowdfunding a lawsuit against them for all the uh. cam... The, 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 and all the sugar the media, yeah, yeah. sugar babying and honey trapping and all this but that's, a, that's obviously like a different thing yeah we're not we're not telling you but like if a man that's like okay I know I, I, I don't want to say it right but like I know Andrew Tate 
kind of feeds off this shit. Like Andrew yeah. Tate is just a shit house. Yeah, and, and but he's also just a shit. Yeah, and Hakimi to be backed up by a man like Andrew Tate doesn't really put you in good yeah, standing no, at all. No, and the amount it's it's so dangerous. The amount of people on you know social media who are kind of applauding this and applauding people like Andrew Tate, who are applauding the you know the reports about Hakimi, like I, it generally baffles me, like how you can defend that. We're gonna, I'm going to say this now. It's not cool to be misogynistic. It's not cool to be sexist. That, that's the name of the pod right there. That's the name of the pod. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, it's just... It's not. Like, right. It's 2023, right? And it was the same in 2022. It was the same in 2021. It was the same... In 1987. It was the same in 1543. Yeah. Kind of it was the same before Jesus. Or whoever you believe in religiously. I will not discriminate, but I'm just going to say Jesus. Um, women and men are still people yeah we're okay some things we do a little differently okay unless you're a man who sits down to pee like, <laughs> like you, you get what I mean right things women, are different but we're still equal guys. Things are, we do things slightly differently okay like for example obviously yeah the toilet scenario or Sam might wear a bra, which is exactly the same as women, actually. But, um, oh, shut up. <laughs> but like the point I'm trying to get is like women and men are equal in football, in life, in everything, and you can't be like I'm a man, so I'm the more dominant one, and I get to keep all the money because that's not how life works. Like a divorce, you're basically saying that something's not working out. Okay, so that means that in this scenario. Split the shared finances 50-50, which, you know, you makes split, sense. You split the shared finances 50-50, and then nine times out of ten, in a divorce, I think the legal proceeding is you either, like, someone takes a house, or, or you sell the house, and that's yeah. 50-50, you sell the car, that goes 50-50, yeah. or... The possessions are split Whatever's 50-50. left, if there's, like, 300k worth of assets, you either sell it to get 150 each, or someone takes 150 and someone takes yeah. 150. That is how... Divorce works in 99.999% of countries. Um, but, I mean, it doesn't really matter because, much like Hakimi's standing with me and Sam, the league title race in France is pretty much over now. That was a fucking segue! <laughs> um, but, okay, we'll touch on it like, really, really quickly because this has been a long pod. Um, if you're still here, thank you for sticking it's, with us. Yeah, we game. are about an hour and a half. This no, not an hour and a half, an hour through. Th- this has a, been a bumper pod. Um, but obviously just with last week not being here. Um, and the week before. And the week before. We, we have to kind of... Fill in the gap. Fill in the gap. Um, we will try and be more regular. Uh, up and coming it, it really depends on if I'm being honest it's timing and self-belief to actually do a podcast <laughs> um, and resilience at times but to quickly sum up uh, Ligue 1 again in my little French league rundown um, PSG beat Lens 3-0 on Saturday and it now puts them what? Eight points Eight clear. Eight points clear of second place Marseille. With seven games to go. With seven games to go. It's done. Okay. It's it's done. There's no... PSG now have a very easy run, and I think the only thing that could have stopped that would have been a banana skin and a loss to Long. Long, well, yeah. Long had to win. Long went down to ten men. Um, Very early on in that yeah. game, and then it was just the classic, the classic show, Messi and Mbappe just doing their thing. Yeah. And before you knew it, it was it was three nil long. Um, uh, sorry, it wasn't three nil. Three one. I do apologize. Frankowski scored a penalty. Uh, sorry to disrespect my goal like that, but. We, I mean, do you do you agree with me? Do you think the French? Yeah, French yeah. league's done. Um, I did want to touch on the Premier League title race, where it is now down to four points. Um, I still think I still think Arsenal's going to win the league. Uh, Arsenal's. I know you need to play Man City, and City, City have a game in hand. 
I think City so. have got this, but to be honest, they've got to play Arsenal and their game in hand is against West Ham. City, I think City have got this. I think City Arsenal is a big one. I think yeah. everyone said Arsenal Liverpool was a big one as well. I really think people thought the league was kind of wrapped up at that point. Um, yeah. The other one that I want to touch on in England is the National League. Wrexham are now three games off of League Two. Yeah, um, and they're so close to the all-time points record in any national in any um, England wide league in terms of like points. Points. Just, so Reading have the record insane. in the Championship, which is one hundred and six, but Wrexham are on one hundred and three with three games to go. So they could break that record very easily in any of the top five Basically leagues. Basically, a win this weekend for Wrexham, and they are. Yeah. Back in, well, not back. They're in the football league system for the first time in the club's history. No, I no, no, no. Because no, they yeah, no. used to be used to be league two side, but yeah, the first um, time in a good few years. I think it's about twelve years. 12 I think years. It is, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Because they were in league two and Foster, then Foster played them and stuff. Like that. Yeah, back yeah, in two thousand five. Yeah. yeah, first time. Um, okay. But, uh, you also want to touch on a title race, another title race in Europe. Which is only just starting to hot up because of a shit show from one of the teams is yeah. the only way we can describe this. Now, Sam, I want to take you back to February. Yes. Um, where you and me had a fantastic beer filled experience in Budapest. Yes. Um, in the lovely country of Hungary, Viktor Orban, I will take my £100 payment for saying that now. <laughs> From the tourist board, thank you very much. The board, thank you. Yeah, visit visit Hungary. Um, because three beers for £3.50, that's all I'm saying. That is true. And that was in a service station, by the way. I just want to point out, that was in a fucking garage. Right. Anyway, to, to go back to it, I want to take you back to the 4th of February, um, 2023. You and me went to Fernandes against Uspest against Uspest and it was an eventful game I'll say that yes. much um, I never thought I would swear it an away section in hospitality <laughs> but there we go. in a completely different country <laughs> um, anyway Uspest lost 3-0 to Fernandes it was 3-1 three, I forgot about that goal so that was a free one, a free one game there against there we go. With, the, with the goalkeeper getting sent off for that. Like this is Sparta kick. Yeah. On um, was it Triori, I think. I think it was something like yeah. that. Yeah. Anyway, since then, we've obviously had a bit of an adventure. A nil-nil draw to Kishvarda. Okay. A one-one draw with Ketchkomet. Beat the Brecken. Beat the Brecken. Another draw to... Um, this is Fennish Files, by the way. Yeah, Fennish Files. Another draw with Mezokov... Mushkoved. Mushkoved, something like that. Then... Knocked out the Europa. Knocked out the Europa League on aggregate... 4-0 on aggregate to Bayer Leverkusen. Understandable. Which, understandable. And this is where it gets fun. A 2-1 loss to Pushkas Academia with 10 men. Pushkas Academia with 10 men, yeah. A 1 0 loss to. Jegalerseg. Yep. Yeah. Or ZTEs, I'm going to ZTE, call them. Yeah. A 2 2 draw at Ferrava. Uh, uh, a a, a 3 2 loss to Pax EFC. Again. And then only just improving recently. This is their first win since the UFS game. First win since. Since the 5th of February. Oh, no, no, wait, no, since. This is their first win since the 26th of February. Sorry, yep. Yeah. So this is their first win in almost two months. Will it be Budapest Tom Fed 3 0? To go back to the actual league, currently Fernsvaros are on 54 points. With six games to go. Six games to go in this league. No, and wait, uh, seven games to go, sorry. I think it's seven? No, it's. Uh, yeah, seven. One, seven, sorry. One. No, one, two, three, four. No, six it's games. Se- se- no, oh, is it six? Sorry, it's six. six. It's six. It's only 32, uh, 32 games. 33 so games. 33, yeah. Yeah. So, to go back to what we're touching on, 48 points right now for Ketchkomet. Ketchkomet, yeah. Okay, who have lost one in their last five. Friday have lost three in the last five and drew one. Yeah, they've only won one of their last five, four points in the last five games. Which Friday, or Fernandes, um, play Ketchkomet 
in a couple of weeks' time. In a couple of weeks' time. There is now a chance that for the first time in a long time, Ferns Varos can lose the title. Can lose the title. And it will be an almighty collapse, to be honest. It's, I mean, if we go back to when we went to see them against Swooshfest, they were about 14 points. Clear. Yeah. They were like, now it's only six. Now it's only six. The, the collapse, I just don't know how to describe it. I think the Pushcast Academia game and the ZTE game, I can understand. Yeah. Because the focus would have been on trying to give Leverkusen a game. Yeah. But this is it's just another classic example, really, of Fern Charles being Fern Charles, I suppose. Yeah, just bottling it. It's, the, the problem I think Fern Charles have, really, is I think so much hope was put in the team for the Europa League. Yeah, and the fact that they got to the knockout stages and is is really good going, but I think what really happened and what really kind of seen them come unstuck was a big error, in my opinion, was playing that home leg in the Pushkas Arena. In the Pushkas Arena, not the Group Arm Arena, which is you know still UEFA license, still all that kind of stuff, but. It was more about the money, I think. Yeah, because the push Arena really holds, what, 60,000? Yeah, easy. 68, I think. Yeah. Whereas, you know, the uh, Group Arm only holds about 20, I think. 24? 24, something like that, yeah. It wasn't too small when we went. Um, it was a lo- it's a really nice stadium. I will say that about Hungary. Is it's like... The government's put a lot of money into the football system in Hungary. Football's free to air. It's on free TV. Even Champions League is on free TV. I mean, what can you <coughs> say? Hint, hint. You know, bring... Uh, BBC! <laughs> bring it, just bring this shit back, right? But... I'm going to quickly look at these last, few, these last few games. Okay. So, Friday's next game... Is against bottom... Is against bottom, bottom, bottom side Vasas. So that is... Pretty much right. I would say that's wrapped up. The banana skin. Well, actually, no. They've got they've got the derby against Uzbekist. This is a banana skin. Yeah, I think. a lot. Yeah. Because this derby against Uzbekist on the first of May is away at Uzbekist. Right. Uzbekist, yeah. And then the ke- the catch commit game is two weeks later. Is two weeks later. Well, twelve days later. Sorry, twelve, 12 days. Twelve days later. Sorry. In catch commit. Yeah. And it's, it does sound like a very, very rough run, running because they've got Vasas, which are you know, pretty easy. But they've got Uspest, Kishvada, Keshkomet, Depression, and Meshkoved, who are like most of those teams, you know, Keshkomet are second, Vasas are bottom, but the rest of them are kind of in the mid table. But if we go to. Um, if we go uh, Ke- uh, to Ke- deck games, they've got Morfeva, who are near the bottom, Pachi, who are near the bottom, Honved, who are near the bottom. Paxi's third. Oh, sorry, Paxi's third. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Paxi's third. Paxi. near the bottom. Fernsvaros, who are obviously top but currently. But yeah, Kishvaros Kish and Uspest are the table. And Uspest, again, that's away. But surely, now, I don't want to be that person that's saying there's going to be match fixing in Hungarian football. <laughs> surely, right, if Uspest know that Fernsvaros can fuck the league against Kekskomet, they're going to let them. <laughs> <laughs> And this is the moment where I'm not allowed back in Hungary. Um, and there's, you know, seven, six games left, and they're all, you know, very, very key. Um, I, I would say, see if I still had some money left over, I would go to Keshka my parents' vows. Like, yes. If it wasn't in the middle of exams. Oh, my exams were over by that point. It's the 13th of May. Um, oh, I am tempted. I am tempted. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where Keshire is, to be honest. Anyway, um, should we move on to predictions before we... Uh, before this podcast goes on far too long. For like three hours, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, we'll Google it later. <laughs> anyway, predictions. We'll start with Scotland. Um, we'll start with... We'll start with Scotland. Um, yeah. Uh, so, first game is an early kickoff between Hearts and Ross County. Ooh. 
So this is the, the last game before the split. split. Um, this isn't an easy one. This is not an easy one at all. Um, because a couple of months ago, you probably said Hearts. Yeah. But now, I'm going to say 1-0 Ross County. 1-0 to County. Interesting. And my reasoning for this is... Because... Because of, of what's just fucking happened. Like, the implosion that's just happened at Hearts is yeah. my reason for it. Again, I'd probably, get, I'd probably go roughly the same. I think... I think Hearts would do enough to get a draw, but it's going to be one of these unconvincing ones where they get like a 95th minute penalty given by VAR when it shouldn't have been a penalty kind of thing. Uh, I'm going to go for one all. Um, and this will... Yeah. But this leads into Dundee United versus Livingston. 1-0 Livy. That's, that's, that's an easy one. Um, I think Livy are trying to guarantee the top six. Yes, but... Uh, they were point behind Hibs at the moment. Point behind Hibs, and they need like this is it's going to be a good game. Yeah. Because one team's fighting for Europe, one team's fighting to avoid going down, but it's like, like yeah. I, I think Levy want Europe. I don't think that Levy will sit there and not at least try Fight for it. Yeah. For it, um, and that's like the only thing I can say. Uh, they, they, they want conference yeah. league. It's going to be one 0 so that they can try and guarantee top six as best as possible. But then, yeah, I'm just going to yeah. say one 0 I wasn't good. I was going to try and back that up with a Dundee United argument. I can't find one. I'm going to go for one or oh sorry two all sorry. I think Dundee United need that fight in them, and this is the point where they need to fight to kind of get out of that relegation scrap, which they're all kind of down there. Um, and so I'm going to go with two all just because I do see goals in this one. Um, St Mirren against Kilmarnock again. S- again, similar situation where it is where there's one team fighting to get out of that relegation spot and there's one team fighting for the top six. I don't want to back Stephen Robinson. <laughs> but I'm going to have to. A 2 0 St Mirren. 2 0 St. Mirren. Um, that's St. Mirren team, by the way. I, I mean, we haven't been able to speak much about St. Mirren on the podcast just purely because none of us support St. Mirren. And nobody really cares. And no one really cares that much. But that St. Mirren team, I mean, yeah, it's that, that's weird. St. Mirren team. Like, it's, it's, it's very strange mix. It is a past and present Motherwell squad builder. <laughs> like, I mean, well, when you look at some of the players that are in there, Richard Tate, Charles Dunn. Tony Watt's there now. Tony Watt, Curtis Main, Mark O'Hara, um, Trevor Carson. Like, a lot of that team is just old Motherwell players and Stephen Robinson. Um, but Robinson's now linked with the Hearts job. I don't know if you've seen Ooh, that. I haven't there is seen a link that, with that. Him and David Martindale's the other one. I, can't, I don't see either of those happening, to be honest. But Ro- but Robinson suffers from second season syndrome really badly. Yeah. So as much as this St Mirren team will probably win this weekend and get top six and do really well, it will all fall apart next season. Um, I will put money on that because I have experience of Stephen Robinson. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go here with a one all draw. I think Hilly will try and fight for something. They'll get something. Um, but a point probably won't suit. So, both sides. Uh, moving on, uh, we've got Celtic against Motherwell. Do you remember what I said in the last podcast? That it would be really Motherwell of us to go beat Hibs, lose to Dundee United, not like totally fuck our chance of the top six and then still get something against Celtic. Yes, you did say that and then you went on to beat Hibs. And then fuck it against Dundee United. <laughs> You're the oracle. <laughs> so for that reason, I'm going to say Celtic nil. Oh no. Motherwell nil. Oh. You thought I was going to say a goal. Oh, I thought you were going to say what they are. No. I think this is the game where we just try and like park the bus, shut them down. Yeah. And, like try and just kind of frustrate them. But it is at Parkhead. Yeah, it is. And for that reason, I'm going to go Celtic 4, Motherwell 1. 
and this will be the last episode of the Fox <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you've got a chance to get revenge here because it's St. Johnston that gets Hibs and Hibs need to win this one to get to top six. Hibs, Nelson, Jotna. <laughs> St. Johnston, 18. <laughs> what was that El Classico score from earlier? 11-1. Uh, uh, Let's put that. <laughs> you really going to put that? <laughs> well, not actually. <laughs> um, Hibs, 2, St. Johnston, nil. Another 2. Oh, in fact, no. Hibs, 3. St. Johnston, 1. Ooh. That's what I'll go with for that. Oh, I think this is going to be... Hibs are not going to be great in this one because every time when the pressure's been on them in terms of the Dundee United game a couple of weeks ago, uh, the Motherwell game, they've fucked it. So I'm going to say St. Johnston nil. They're going to scrape it, I think. St. Johnston nil, Hibs won. And the last game of the weekend in the SPFL was on Sunday and it's Aberdeen against Rangers. Aberdeen against Rangers? Yeah. At Petodri. 1-1. One, 1-1. One. One, one. Just because of, of how good that Aberdeen team is just now. Yeah. Under Rob, Robson? Robson? Uh, uh, yeah, Robson. Yeah. I, I'm going to go one better. I think Aberdeen 2, Rangers 1. You're, you're going to die, Sam. <laughs> like, you're, you're not going to be allowed to leave here, you know. That's well. How that's, that's how this is working out for you. <laughs> Uh, we move on now. Let's have a look at some other of the other leagues. Uh, see if there's any interesting features going on from there. Uh, let's go for ooh. Ooh, best. <laughs> let's go for Sunday, twenty third, two p.m. kickoff. Bournemouth against West Ham. Remember, West Ham have just come off a win in the Conference League. They're through to the next round. This is true. But it was against... Genk. Genk. Well, Genk, one of the two. I can't remember which one. We got it score against, against Astro fucking Gugu. <laughs> Genk, Genk, whatever they are. But they're playing Bournemouth, which is much easier to... You don't know, get that mixed up with anyone. Okay, I think it's a pretty easy one to sum up. 2-0 Bournemouth. I am going to go for something similar as well. Bournemouth have been fantastic over the past few weeks. Beat Spurs 3-2. 3-2, two, yeah. Uh, they've got some early... Go- they've uh, given Liverpool a game. I think they beat Liverpool. They've given Arsenal a game. Beat City. Almost beat City. Almost, yeah, they gave City a game as well. I think I'm going to go with the Bournemouth win. West Ham as well, having that... We'll have a European hangover. They're through to the semi-finals against uh, Aislid Alkmaar. I think they play next. But yeah... Uh, I'm going to go... Bro- How fucking weird is it going to be if West Ham go down win the Conference League? I, I have a bet that that will happen. I have a 50p bet on a double that West Ham go down and win the Conference League. Get me about 20 quid from 50p, so... Paint on you then when it happens. <laughs> but, um, right. Other ones that we can touch on very quickly. I will go across to the French League, I think, for this one. Yeah, and across to the French League. I will go across to the French League. Uh, the ones I would like to give to you are... Now, I was going to give you Angers PSG, but I feel like that is just a guaranteed... PSG win. PSG win. Um, so the ones I will pitch to you are... Saturday, 8 o'clock kick-off, or 9 o'clock kick-off French time, Long against Monaco. Ooh. Ooh, I do like the sound of, sound of that. It's just a very hipster derby, I have to say. Well, it's not a derby, but... It's, it's a very, very hipster game. game. <sighs> I am going to say it's a 1-1 one, one draw. I will say Lois Openda to score for Long, and then Vissan Ben Cheddar himself to, to score for Monaco. I think it is going to be a draw. It is going to be a very... Fun game to watch, and I'm going to go for quite a few more goals. I'm going to go Lons three, Monaco three. Ooh. Okay, and uh, my, my second game for for this weekend in the French league will be uh, Lyon against Marseille. Ooh. Yeah, it's a very good weekend. It's a good. It's life. a fun little weekend. Fun it is. Little yeah. Weekend there. Um, and for that one, 
I think Marseille are trying their best now to close that gap to PSG if they can do it. If, yeah. It is a big if, but I'm going to say 2-1 Marseille purely because Lyon have still got something in them. Yeah. Uh, I guess also as well for that reason, I'm going to go for a 1-0 draw. I think Marseille don't have enough in them to kind of put up that fight. They're going to have these slip-ups. They're... You know, they know the league's gone pretty much at this rate, so they're going to slip up against teams like Lyon, who, you know, aren't having a good season, but they're, you know, historically have always been up there. So I think I think I'm going to go with one all. all right, to wrap this up, I'm going to take one game from the Bundesliga, one game, from, one game from Serie A, and one game from La Liga. I'll give you the game from Serie A first. Okay. Given the fact that they've just been given 15 points, Sunday... Quarter to eight kickoff or quarter to nine yep. kickoff in Italy. It is Juventus at home to Napoli. Oh, ho, 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 ho. so yes, Serie A, the title race. Yeah, yeah, Napoli, Juventus is now back up into the third position. So that title race could could be on. I think they're about what, 11, 12 points behind still. But yeah, that is a tasty one. And Napoli have just come off that loss in the Champions League. Which, to Milan. But I think now that Napoli are out of the Champions League, they're going to focus on getting that Scudetto. Le- having the leagues wrapped up, yeah. For that reason, I'm going to. S- I'm not going to say it's going to be. I'm going to say it's going to be close. I'm going to say three two Napoli. Ooh. Because I think now is it at is it at is it in Turin? It is in Turin. Ooh. But I still think. Napoli have got more in the tank than Juve this season. Yeah. Even with a 15-point deduction, Juve were looking pretty poor this season. Yeah. I mean, the fact that they've got their 15 points back in there in third, which is, you know, still a decent season for them, but... Juve, they should a, be, a normal season uh, for Juve, that should put them in sec... Like, that should have put them, like... Sec- in between first and second, or, kind of or maybe, like... Three points behind Napoli. Yeah, but with a fifteen-point deduction, I'm sure you yeah. may run like seven for eight before this. Yeah, and then what? I think they're twelve points behind still with the, with the twelve points behind Lazio. So the twelve points. No, twelve points behind two. Uh, who's in second? Milan, I think. Lazio. Oh, Lazio second. It's Lazio man. Oh. Um, it is currently in. Uh, not in uh, Napoli, UV. Sorry, Napoli, Lazio, UV, Inter. And then Roma. No, no Roma yeah. Enter. Yeah, so... Um, that's a, yeah. So I I am going to go for... Juve 1, Napoli 2. I reckon it's going to be a tight game. I reckon Victor Osman going to get a late goal. And it's going to, you know, put Napoli in a good place. Um, I do have a game from La Liga for you. I've got uh, the one from the Bundesliga, mate. So. Well... Uh, I don't mind either way, but yeah, Sunday, 23rd of April. Uh, uh, no, wait, I'm looking at the wrong one. <laughs> no, 23rd of April is this weekend, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. sorry. Um, 3 15 kickoff UK time. Barcelona against Atletico Madrid. The Griezmann Derby. Yeah, Barcelona in first, Atleti in third. Atleti only two points behind Real Madrid now. This could be exciting. But, it's a difficult one. Okay. Is that, is that the camp now? Is that the camp now, yep. Yeah. Atletico Madrid haven't, haven't lost in the league since they played Barcelona in the reverse feature on the uh, 8th of January. I'm still going to say a 1-1. 1-1. I'm going to say Lewandowski gets a goal for Barcelona. And Griezmann gets one for... Reflectful. I'm going to go seeming as the fact that uh, two, the Bar- uh, past two games for Barcelona against Girona and Getafe have finished 0-0 draws I'm going to go for the third 0-0 draw in succession um, just because I watched a bit of that Girona game and the, uh, but it was just terrible to watch I, I, I would like to change my prediction too late now too late now too late now too late now do you know what it's fine I'll put it in for this game um, a, a legendary prediction is about to make its return. Okay, now Sunday, sixteen thirty, 
kickoff in Germany. Yeah. Well, sixteen thirty kickoff UK time. So it'll be five thirty kickoff in Germany. Yep. Yeah. Bayer Leverkusen against LB Leipzig. Ooh. And I am going to say, drum roll please. Are you going to go for it? Are you going to go for it? Five, five is back. Woo! I'm going to say five, five. Um, realistically, I think it's going to be a two-two. It's just I want to bring like a, yeah. the five-five back. Uh, Leipzig are currently fourth. Leverkusen sixth. Uh, Leverkusen look like in the better form. Uh, they're through to the next round in Europe as well. They beat USG tonight. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go Leverkusen 2, Leipzig 1. I think it's going to be one of those games. And I think, seeing as the fact that we've put attention on it now, um, I'm going to give you... Oh, actually... Given the fact that, it, yes, we did talk about French Varos and we did talk about um, the the title race there, which gave Schmidt as well, I'm going to give you another game from Hungary right now. On Friday night, so tomorrow night, 7pm UK time, Budapest Honved will play Uspest. Why didn't we know about this until now? I, we, we could have been... <laughs> I have an exam on Monday. <laughs> Bro, we're going to do this podcast in a hotel in Budapest. It's going to be brilliant, right? Um, I don't know what it is, right? I mean, so I'm just having a love affair with Budapest. I like for like, and Hungarian football. Not a love affair. Not, <laughs> please don't take that out of context. Not a love affair in Budapest. A love affair of Budapest. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Honved Uspest. Uspest are higher up than Honved. Honved, yes, so though, are fighting to stay in... Uspest are currently 7th, Honved are 11th, it has two years. I want Honved to stay up more than Uspest. I'm going to go, but it's in Uspest, isn't it? No, it's at, it's at the... Um, Is it's it the Bosch kit? It's the Bosch kit, yeah. It's in Kishpest. For that reason, then... I can't even zoom in... On Kishpest on Google Maps as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to. Uh, it's there, which means that the stadium. Now, I can't find the dodgy Soviet alley. Boschik Arena. Boschik Arena. The Boschik Arena. This isn't very. This isn't a uh, audio feature. Uh, but yeah. Look, there it is. <laughs> the dodgy alley. It's the dodgy Soviet alley. <laughs> <laughs> I've broken Stalin's house. <laughs> Anyway, sorry. Um, 2 1 Honved. 2 1 Honved. Because they're fighting to stay in the top flight. I will also add into the fact that Honved also have uh, one of the league's top goal scorers in Nada Lukic. Um, Uspest, if I remember correctly, they didn't, have, they didn't actually look that threatening when we went to go see them. But yeah, it's a very. It's a, it's a tough game to call, I think. That, that arena is beautiful. That box uh, I need to go back. Anyway, if just just to give a description, like really really quickly to um, anyone who hasn't anyone been. who hasn't been to Budapest or well Kishpest this is, but um, to describe the Bosch Arena to you, it is like the Allianz surrounded by Soviet factories and communist murals. And also about ten times smaller. But well, yeah, but, but, yeah, but it, it's that kind of style. Yeah. Kind of grasp, yeah. It's, it's only like probably 15,000 compared. Probably like the size of Easter Road. But I, think looking, it, I think it's smaller. Definitely smaller, I think. But, well, maybe the size of Fort Park, right? Yeah. But looking like the Allianz. It's beautiful. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> because of that, because of the whole fight for relegation, and because of the fact they've got uh, Honved have a goal score and Nuspest really don't, I'm going to go with Honved 3, Uspest 0. I'm sure it was a centre-back that scored when we seen them there, Charles. Uh, or like a midfielder. Or something. It, wasn't, it wasn't a good goal. No. It wasn't like a team... It was, it was a penalty, wasn't it? Oh, I can't remember. I can't remember. Anyway, that's like a, a, a discussion for a different time. 
Because um, this discussion has gone on looking at this an hour and the, 39 minutes. This has been probably a long one. Um, thanks for sticking with us again. Yeah, it's, thank you for actually listening to us talk about and rant about shit. Rant about <laughs> shit and discuss our trip. For to, almost two hours. For almost two hours. We've discussed a trip to Hungary. We've discussed so many different leagues. We've wrapped things up talking about Ferenc Varos, which then leads me to talk about something else that is green and white. Hopefully... Edinburgh. Edinburgh is green and white. <laughs> Edinburgh is green and white. Hungary could be, could be green and white. Could be not. Whatever kick so much colours are. But it could also not be green and white. And much like Hungary, this podcast may or may not be green or white next time because we may or may not get Andy. <laughs> <laughs> And on that tension of, uh, are oh, we going to bring Andy back? Uh, this has been the False Nighting Podcast. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you again next time. Hashtag free Andy. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, 